Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and we're really excited. We have Samantha here. Hello. And she has an awesome YouTube channel, so make sure to go check her channel out. But today she's gonna be showing us her van. So we're excited to get into that. Let's go. Cool. Hey guys, my name is Samantha and I am a flight attendant and I am based in Dallas, which is where we currently are. And this is my van. It is a 1999 Chevy Express 1500. It says Regency on the side. I feel like that might be important, but I'm not 100% sure. I got this beautiful girl on Facebook Market. I paid $3,000 for it, just cash on the spot. And uh, as you can tell, I haven't really done anything to the outside. It definitely could use a nice dressed up paint job, but we have not gotten to that point yet. She is exactly as you see her. Let's go inside and check it out. This section, the front part of my van, I didn't change at all, so it's kind of boring. But because I'm a flight attendant, I always have tons of luggage with me. I use this van at base, so I have to have my luggage with me at all times. So basically, this is what it always looks like. Just kind of trashed with my luggage. We've got lunch up here and also my gym bag, which doubles as my shower bag. So that just stays packed and ready to go right here where I can grab it super easily at all times. My biggest key to van life is making the most out of a tiny bit of storage. So all my pockets and everything I use so here we have just a little bit of storage and I hang my laundry hamper on the back of my seat. If I have a backpack, it hangs on the back of here. But if you go below the seat and the storage, this is actually where I installed my Chinese diesel heater. So it blows just directly into the open space of the van. And because I travel alone and I don't often have a companion with me, um, it the seat never has to move. The seat doesn't have any obstruction. So that is a awesome place. The wires go behind the driver's seat where I connected my diesel tank. And that's where it stays. And luckily, because I'm short, I don't ever have to have the seat backed up all the way. So I have had zero issues with having the tank there. Probably my most asked question anytime I show anybody the builds when they discover my YouTube channel or my Instagram is how tall am I and whether or not I can stand up in my van, which was probably the most important factor for me in deciding what van to get. It was actually my only defining factor was whether or not I could stand up. I knew for the purposes of my van that there would possibly be days that I could not leave the van rainy days or parking situations and I would need to be able to stand up and walk around I am 5'4 and I can fully stand up in my van but I did gut the entire ceiling out and I'll take off the tiara if I stand directly under my um, fan I get like another couple of inches so I built it perfectly so that when I'm cooking I can fully stand up straight right in front of that cooking space Storage is everything in a tiny, tiny space. So we have all the storage along the side walls, which I intended to be cabinets, but I did this entire build myself. I just watched YouTube videos every day for every single thing that I was building that day and went with it. And when I got to the point of doing these shelves, I realized I did not have the skills or knowledge or patience at that point to try to build cabinets. So this is what they turned out as just shelves. And I was able to find perfectly sized baskets to fit all of my junk up there. More storage we have here. These spaces, cubby holes came in the original build and I got very gut happy when I was gutting the van. So I gutted everything in here down to the metal, which I would probably not do again if I were going to do another van. So luckily I actually had help building this wood piece to go in front of that metal. And then I just built these doors and put the doors on top for insulation. I ended up going with fiberglass insulation. Is that what's called? Which I have not been recommended to do. But again, I, I literally built this van step 
by step. So every day, if one day I was framing, I was watching videos on how to frame. The next day I was putting in insulation. So then I was watching videos um, on what to use for insulation. And so that's what I ended up using. There's probably a lot better options out there to use. For the tongue and groove, it's just your standard cedar planks. I bought the thinnest ones I could find, but I think they're very standard from Home Depot or Menards. Yeah, and that's what I used for the ceiling, walls, doors, everything was just that, except for what you see up here, which these were just pre-purchased from Home Depot, painted white, stuck right on there. Moving on to the kitchen, this glorious kitchen right here. I tried to keep my build as simple as possible because as I continued on building, I was realizing very quickly what my skill set was. And when I discovered you could buy pre-made kitchenettes, that is exactly what I did. So this is just from Home Depot, I think. It's like the most standard. It's actually two pieces. So this little one here is separate from these over here and I just put them together. I was obsessed with the idea of doing a tiled countertop. Like everybody tried to talk me out of it and I refused to listen. So here we are with a tiled countertop that is impossible to keep clean and it cracks and breaks and all that but it looks pretty so I'm not that upset about it so basically it's just a piece of plywood and I just put tiles on it that's it but probably my favorite part of the entire kitchen is this sink which I got on Facebook market for like $15 and the lady who sold it to me was actually selling it from a started and not ever gonna finish van build for herself so I feel like it is living out its best van life destiny here in my van and it's quite deep so you can kind of see it is all the way down here and my intention was that if I wanted to wash my hair in the van that I wanted my whole head to fit into the sink and I've never once washed my hair in the van however it is also added storage I'm often just keeping things in the sink and it's great. I've been happy about that purchase forever. This is my original faucet that I bought um, and I had installed a water pump that I got on Amazon, but I realized incredibly quickly that it used electricity that I didn't feel was necessary to use, but it was also felt very wasteful on the water when I was doing dishes and things like that. I just wasn't a big fan of it and I thought I could do something better. So now I just use like a standard gravity water system and I've loved every second of that. Um, in this chaos down here, if you look in between all the crevices of all those crazy things, um, there is a gray water tank down there. It's a five gallon tank. So originally I had two of those tanks, one with fresh water, one gray water. But the other bonus of doing the gravity water where it fits in my sink is I had all the extra storage under here. So I was able to, um, put in a shelf that kind of holds other things. I'm obviously not that organized, it's fine. And on this side, we have the Dometic fridge that I got. Um, I have no idea what kind it is or anything like that. Um, it wasn't the cheapest one, but it was definitely not super expensive. And I'm a huge fan of it. Um, however, I have stopped using it just because with my job, I'm gone from the van for days to weeks at a time. So when it was being plugged in, I would get back to my van and it would have no battery. So I have stopped using it, but I just keep it because I'm hopefully will use it someday. Also, it was very expensive. I don't know if this is normal all over the country. Um, I'm from Minneapolis, the Midwest, and we have junk drawers in every household in the Midwest. We're just everything ends up and that is exactly what this is work glove mini bottles napkins batteries advil a fan in case i'm feeling the need to uh cool myself um that is all kept in this drawer this one is my silverware drawer that has non-intentionally turned into sort of a second junk drawer and this is fake so it's just there for aesthetics. 
I had seen in several other builds, which you can probably gather from looking at this build altogether, a lot of what I decided was things that I saw in other people's builds on Instagram and YouTube and wanted to incorporate in my own. And um, so it's kind of just a hodgepodge of all these things. One of those was hooks to hold mugs underneath the cabinetry or shelving area. I was desperate to have that, I wanted it. And I still use them. I actually use them for a lot of things. So sometimes I'll have my water kettle hanging up here. I've only ever once had, I've only ever once had one of the mugs fall off and it was one of these. I was very sad about it. But other than that, they stay. My only complaint is that they, I put them a little close. So while I'm driving, they're just constantly banging on the wood behind. But yeah, I love them aesthetically. They were one of my favorite parts of the build. So under this junk drawer, I have sort of a junk storage space that's basically cooking and beauty stuff. So that is where I keep my Coleman two burner propane camping stove. And this is what I use. So again, I strategically placed my fan where it could suck up all of the cooking aftermath and things like that. I've been using this camping stove since the day that I got the van. It was the first camping stove I got and I was absolutely determined to get a two burner because in my house I had a two burner or you know, I would use two burners at a time. So that was something that I felt at the time was so important to me. Nobody again could tell me different. Um, I'm very strong in my convictions <laughs> and I would not do that again. I'm a huge fan of keeping things as simple as possible. So in the future, I would not build in a stove. I like the idea of taking it off and just having to not to think about it or worry about it. And I like also the small propane bottles. I'm still like a little bit afraid of propane, but I would just do the smallest single burner cooktop that I could find in the future. But I did pay for this. It's been working for me. So I just keep using it. That is it for the kitchen. Let's move on to the bedroom. Okay, so this is the luxurious bedroom that I built. It's the size of the mattress is a full size mattress. I think it's a five inch foam, just super simple. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to fit it this way and I would have to cut it. So I wanted just like a pure foam, like something really easy to cut. I can't remember how many inches that I cut off, but it was quite a few. I actually cannot lay straight across. I have to sleep diagonal is the only way that I can fit. But since it's just me, it works out. Above the bed here, I have another storage very similar to the one across that you would have seen in the kitchen. And this is where I keep just some clothes. I have some hats up there, just some miscellaneous things. So that is that storage, but that is not all my clothes because that only fits like one eighth of them. So the other clothing storage I had was I built in these drawers here and they have locks on them so they don't fly open when I'm driving, which they will. So I just put on these super simple locks, but as you can see, they're stuffed full. So that is one way to access them. And then I built in underneath the bed, this whole compartment here is also full of miscellaneous shoes, coats, like the more bulky items. I have like a 12 volt heated blanket in there. I have an actual like camping stove. I don't even know how to explain it. I think I have a, like a gallon shower thing in there. Most of it I've never used, but I was convinced I could never live without it. So that is that. I used to have a bar that held this up but my mattress was too much for it to handle. On this side is where I built my entire electrical system, which has been the worst part of hand life for me because it is hard, very hard to learn, but I'm super proud of it because it works and I did it. My entire battery system just consists of two AGM 100 amp hour batteries and I don't do any solar. It was a decision I made in order to try to keep as stealthy as possible for the reasons that I use my van. That choice is not gonna be right for everybody. At the time, I was also traveling a lot. 
So my battery was charging for hours of driving a day. So I never, ever, ever had a problem. I use a battery to battery charger. So it's essentially a smart charger. It charges off the alternator in my engine. The only things I really power on it are these ceiling LED lights, the fan. I charge several devices. Sometimes I charge my laptop from an inverter, but not often and my diesel heater. So my power draw is quite low, I would say, and I rarely get below 50%. So it's a, it's an electrical system that works really well. And the very last part of my build that I have to show you guys is my garage. So I just did a super simple door back here using the same cedar planks that I used all over the rest of the van and it's just on hinges so it pulls down and it has these little lock things so it stays up and this is where all of my tools go i have camera equipment i have a foldable ladder extra wires and all that stuff because trust me you will need it at some point we got a gas tank <laughs> anything you can possibly imagine is somewhere shoved in this garage area so i i try to leave it as open as possible so i could just keep shoving stuff in there Samantha, what's up? Living the dream. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for showing us this rad van. You're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to share it and yeah. share it with all these guys here. Yeah, so this is the part of the tours where I like to like find out a little bit about their stories. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you have a lot you could share with these folks. Uh, I, one of my first questions is, do you have a name for this van? Yes, although I never use it. Um, I call her Lady Rose because we are all about the princess aesthetic around here. Yeah. My middle name is Rose. It's like my family name is Rose. And I'm Lady Samantha. And this is Lady Rose. We're on an adventure together. <laughs> okay, so you're a solo female. Mm -hmm. Um, you've been doing this yourself since you started, right? Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? I started the build in June 2020, but I didn't start actually traveling until I think October 2020. And I've been living in it essentially full time. I mean, that's arguable to a lot of people, but <laughs> it is my only home. It has been my only home since October 2020. Yeah. And how long? So about two years. This yeah. Is, this is 2022 now. Yeah. So like, what is that? A year and a half, maybe? Would you say two years? Make it yeah. easy. Somebody yeah. called me a liar once when I didn't get it quite right. <laughs> I was like, my bad. Well, I get called a liar when I say uh, I do full time. <laughs> so, I, I've been in and out I of get that. It, yeah. Um, okay. So I think one of the, the questions too is going to, it's always the same thing. Do you have a toilet and a shower? What mm -hmm. do you do? So that's a very simple procedure I would say um, I go to Planet Fitness for all of my shower needs and most of my bathroom needs I just drive to a bathroom um, because of my job I have access to like airports all the time when I'm coming and going to work mm -hmm. and then um, in the middle of the night I just use a standard funnel and bottle system so if you want to see the toilet ladies Funnel and bottle. This is it. This is, <laughs> this is the glamour of van life. So when you see the plastic bottles laying around the vans. Um, Don't I, drink them. Yeah. I, I will say, because I know somebody is going to comment this, like um, I am conscious of the environment and the effects of plastic bottles. However, I do at this point strictly city dwelling. And um, that's kind of my only option for van toilet because you can't in the city it's not as easy to get rid of things yeah. so yeah um i think you you might have and I, I feel like we know you so we know a bit so i'm trying mm -hmm. to like dig out what somebody who's never seen your channel right. might is seeing this so it, i would like you to tell them how you're making your money on the road yeah right. so um i i'm 32 in case i i for some reason i feel like that matters like I wanted to know that about people and women um, so I'm a little older I already had a job when I started this I'm a flight attendant like I mess it mentioned before and I make full-time income doing that um, and then I started my YouTube channel when I got furloughed from work when I built the van and never intended to make money on it but I am making money but not a living income but the two together 
uh, you know, basically it pays for the maintenance costs on the van at this point. But yeah, so for me, I, my job is kind of nomadic in itself because I can live anywhere, fly into work from literally anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have an actual job. I am a civilian. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people I feel like think they need to build a van, quit their job and go travel. And, then and just do Instagram and YouTube and that's it. Yeah, well that's their dream. Yeah. You know, and then I just feel like somewhere along the lines it just become this thing, this is what you do. Right? right. But it's like when I first started van life, I had a full time job. I had no intention of getting rid of it. It just kind of happened slowly over time. But it's like there are people that build a van just for a place to live and still work full time and I don't think that story is being told often. Right, which is like what I try to say on my channel all the time is like the idyllic van life traveling is beautiful and it's a captivating story because it's the dream but for me building the van was something that was going to add value to the life that I already had and it was a way, it was a means to an end which is eventually saving enough money to buy a home in you know an economy that's hard to purchase a home these days so and then i just got lucky and had a lot of time to travel in it but i always intended just to kind of have it parked and live in it now you're also a solo female right correct i would love because so, you know there's there's women out here watching this video what is there anything you want to any knowledge you want to drop on them if they're thinking about this life from that perspective yeah I get asked in my live streams a lot from women um, because I think a lot of women especially young women are really scared and the best piece of advice because I am such a chicken like I'm scared really? of everything I'm scared of the dark I am scared of strangers I'm scared of animals <laughs> like <laughs> I'm scared of bugs okay. I'm, I'm scared of everything so, um, and I could do this easily, but the biggest thing I say is number one, trust your instincts. I know that sounds silly, but I've had instances where I've gone on iOverlander and found a parking spot and I pulled in and tried to stay. And there was one time in particular, I felt so unsafe. I pulled my knife out to sleep next to my knife and I thought, okay, if I feel this unsafe, I'm just going to drive away. And I just went to a Love's or a Walmart or something. So like you never have to stay in a situation that you feel unsafe. Um, I never would park anywhere um, personally it would, that didn't have cell service because I was alone. And when I was traveling, it was winter. So there wasn't a lot of campers. So literally I kept thinking if I get stuck here, I'm here until someone finds me. So um, just like those types of instincts. And again, it just go, it depends on what you're, goals are if you're trying to do like off-roading then you build your van for the off-roading so that you are as safe as possible this van I thought I was gonna be able to do mountain camping I like was gonna park in mountains and that was it and she could not get up and down mountains <laughs> she is so over the weight she was meant to like yeah. these are all things I didn't know yeah. like now in the future I would know okay how much weight is this van meant to handle four-wheel drive Four-wheel drive. If you're going to do camping in the wild, four-wheel drive. I never thought of that. My last little nugget is just life is beautiful. Life is short. If you have a dream, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it or you're not good enough. You are good enough and your life will just be magical the day you just start doing it. Beautiful. That's it. All right, y'all. That's going to be the end of this one. This is Samantha, and she does have a YouTube channel, so it will be in the description below, and I'll probably put it at the end as well. Also, I'm out in Texas here right now. Yeah, we are in Dallas. I don't, that isn't my camera that you guys are watching. This is Bart back there, and he has an awesome YouTube channel as well. So make sure to check out both of these channels. They're, they're great people, and thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'm gonna have links for all these both these folks in the description below. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thanks for hanging out in Lady Rose today. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's showing <laughs> us. Peace.